20 years in this country, the word astronaut automatically meant a man, but that's changed. In fact, beginning in 1978, NASA began accepting the first women astronauts. There are now eight out of the 81 members of the astronaut corps based in Houston. One of the first half dozen to be accepted is Judy Resnick, now 32 years old, a native of Akron, the holder of a doctorate in electrical engineering from the University of Maryland. She is single, she plays the piano, and she's a runner. She's not quite a pilot. I guess you find the back seat of the T-38s, right? That's correct. So you have certain aeronautical skills and so on. Yes. But when you when you're a little girl growing up in Akron, Ohio, did you say, gee, I'd like to be an astronaut someday? No, I really didn't think about it until uh, right about four years ago when NASA announced that they were looking for astronauts who would be uh, engineers and scientists on the space shuttle. And it was accidental that I heard about it, and I just took a chance and applied. Yeah. But once you got into the program, wasn't there a little bit of resentment or a little bit of male chauvinism that was demonstrated to you? This is a very male kind of fighter pilot world that you were entering. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I think everybody leaned over backwards to make sure that we were treated as equals right from the beginning. Is there anything in the space program that women inherently do better than men? Uh, not that I can think of. We're smaller, but yeah. that's about the only thing. But that hasn't changed anything? No. You had to change the uniform some, though. You did have a little talk with them about that. Well, the only thing that they had to do was make a smaller size pressure suit. Uh, one size fits all. Small size for men doesn't fit small women, so we now have an extra small. Okay. We want to show some uh, videotape of some of the physical training that you have to undergo at NASA. You can talk about that a little bit as we take a look at it now with Judy Resnick. It's a, it's a pretty tough program. Were you prepared for this, for the physical difficulty of it? Well, it's not really so difficult physically. Uh, it's a lot of new things, but they lead you through it by the hand. This is uh, a, a demonstration of... Uh, now, wait a minute. That doesn't look like a lot of fun for a Saturday <laughs> afternoon to me. I don't know about you. But <laughs> well, you have to learn how to survive uh, in case you have to get out of a, an airplane in a parachute, and they teach you step-by-step step how to fall, how to be dragged. Uh, that's the impact you feel if you go through an ejection seat. And it's really not as bad as it looks. Uh, they, they show you how to fall into the water by, instead of letting you fall the first time, they let you slide down a slide wire. Like I say, they, they break you into it gradually. Were you a tomboy when you were a kid? No. You weren't, and you, and you took to this right away. You like it. It was fun. What's the best part about being an astronaut? Uh, everything. You just like it all? Yes. You get to exercise your training, electrical engineering, and expand your knowledge enormously, I would think. Yes, I think the best part uh, technically is that it's a very well-rounded approach to uh, science and technology, and we get to do a little bit of everything in state of the art, and it's always a challenge. What happens when you meet a man who's not in the space program and doesn't know who you are, and you say, I'm an astronaut? Does he say, yeah, you're too cute to be an astronaut? Come on, little lady, you can't be an astronaut. I just tell him I'm an engineer. <laughs> You don't tell me you're an astronaut? Not unless he asks. Do you really, you mean when you, when you meet people for the first time? What about the whole business about social relationships? Does it make it, are some men threatened by the fact that you're an astronaut? Uh, I don't know. If they are, they're probably not my friends. Yeah. But all the people that I know, it doesn't bother them. And, and uh, you're a professional person, whatever you do, whether you're an astronaut or a doctor or, a, or anything. Are there discussions in Houston about what happens when men and women go into space for the first time together? The dis there's not discussions among us. Yeah, there, are, there aren't any discussions or preparation for the social impact of that. And, well, you know, we're going to be talking about it after all, if you're up there in some kind of a prolonged space mission. And there may be even relationships that will develop between men and women. Well, I think from our point of view, uh, since we're so used to working together professionally that we look at each other as professional colleagues on the ground and in orbit and whatever, and, and we view it that way, period. Do you think the time will come when there will be romance in the outer space, then? Oh, gee, I really couldn't tell you that. <laughs> but people have just right for right now just a wholly professional attitude about it, and NASA has not begun to form any kind of a seminar or any kind of a training program for people to deal with that publicly or otherwise. Oh, I don't, not at all. Uh, it's a career to us, and we, we treat it that way, and so does NASA. Okay. When do you expect to go up in the shuttle? Oh, it's going to be a few years for, for us who, who are relatively new, but it's worth the wait. You'll be patient enough. I'll try. Okay, great. Judy Resnick, nice to have you with us this morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning back here as you help NBC News with its coverage of the launching of the Columbia Orbiter. We'll be back right after this word.